Okay, so I've got camera one ready to go. Chances are, though, I'm going to want to go ahead and use more than one camera. That's a typical scenario. Usually, and it's not mandatory, you could get away with using just one camera. But usually, you end up using multiple cameras for a shot. So maybe you have three or four different cameras that present different camera shots. Some cameras don't move. They're just stationary. Some cameras move around, rotate, or, or even pan or dolly forwards and backwards, stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this camera that I've already created, and I'm just going to duplicate it, make a copy of it. So I'll make a copy. Control W uh, lets you quickly make a copy. So this will be camera two. Now what I'm going to do is with that camera selected, I'm just going to go over here, lock my viewport to that camera. Let's have a look and see what we can do with this to do something interesting. Uh, what could we do? I'm just kind of winging this for the tutorial right now, so I haven't even decided what I want to do. Maybe we'll do like a panning shot or something, where we're close to this rock or whatever. And we kind of slowly pan over across this. That could be kind of cool. Okay, let's just do that for the sake of the tutorial. So I'm going to start the camera here. And I'm going to go ahead and unlock camera there. Okay, so camera two is in position. Let's see, we might want to do a third camera. I think I might do a third camera for the sake of the tutorial, but I won't go over three just because uh, once you see how to work with director and basically stringing multiple cameras together, you have the idea, so there's no point in me doing anything redundant. Uh, let me take this camera. I'm going to make a third one. And let me see what I want to do with the third one. Um, let's make a copy of this. I'm going to lock my viewport to that camera. This will be camera three. Mm -hmm. Just trying to decide here what I want to do. Maybe something by the water over here could be pretty cool. Let's see if there's something interesting that we can put here. That could be kind of cool looking at this through the leaves. So maybe we could play with like the depth of field or something and put the leaves in focus and then focus on the on the statue in the background. That could be kind of interesting. Maybe we'll do something like this. All right, we'll see. We'll see what we end up with. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave this there. I may not even use this camera, so we'll see how it looks. And if it doesn't look good or whatever, I'll just use something else. <laughs> it's kind of a weird camera stuck in the water down there. Okay, cool. So that's camera three. That's what uh, we'll just leave it at that. Let me fix these numbers real quick. I'm just being anal right now, but all right, cool. I'm going to save now. Um, all right, cool. So the next thing you want to do once you have your camera set up or your particle systems or whatever it is you're going to animate, in this case cameras, you want to select the camera and we want to go ahead and jump into matinee. So let's come up here. Instead of going and looking for our matinee actor, which is way over there, we could keep working over here. Just go up to the matinee menu, click on that cinematic matinee. I'm going to dock that over here. Now I've got my camera one selected right now, and what I'm going to do is jump over to matinee, and I'm going to add this camera over here. So the way that you add it is pretty simple. Just right click, and you'll get a right click menu and you can add different things. You can add a new folder, empty group, you can add a new camera group, all kinds of stuff. A new director group, etc, etc. So I'm not working with particles, skeletal meshes, I'm not doing any lighting, I'm working with cameras. So I'm going to create a new camera group and I can rename it and it's very very important to rename this. So I'm going to call this camera 1 and now I have my camera 1 group up here and I've got different tracks. So this is the group up here called Camera 1. 
and I can collapse this with this little black arrow icon see that and that helps you to organize yourself later because when you're doing more advanced matinees and you're doing like cinematics for a game and stuff like that it's actually pretty common to end up with like 20 different groups over here in this list on the left and being able to collapse them and organize them like this will improve your workflow let you work easier and faster and you won't get as confused as much okay like I do anyway here are the tracks so by default we have a movement track this is a track that you use to animate movement of the camera so if the camera has to move left this is what you use if the camera moves up and down this is what you're going to use. If the camera rotates around to change its uh, the direction it's facing, that's what you're going to use. Now the FOV angle, that's going to change the field of view. So if we go back to our viewport with the camera selected, I'm going to look at the details panel over here. You have this field of view parameter right here. See that in the camera settings? By default, it's set to 90. We can actually change that. And if you look down here in the little preview window for camera one, watch how it changes as I adjust that field of view. See that? It's almost like it's zooming in and out. I'm going to set that back to 90. So we can actually animate that parameter using this track right here, which is pretty cool. So we can animate a camera kind of zooming in and out or doing different things. Okay. So once this track is set up, all we have to do is basically start to animate. So if I left click and drag over here in the uh, in the track view, in the empty area, I can click and drag with the left mouse button, I can move this around. Down here we've got these numbers and these numbers down here represent the amount of seconds that we can animate it. So you notice that there's a green tick mark down here and a, a red one. The red one represents basically the duration of the entire thing. So right now, the entire duration of our animation that we're going to have is going to be from 0 seconds to 5 seconds. And you can see that down here in these green numbers. It'll show you 0 and then 5. That's telling you the length of the actual animation track. So basically, we can't animate anything outside of 5 seconds. If you find that you're going to do something, a cutscene that's going to take 20 seconds to do, you can always take this little red tick mark and just click and drag it out to the 20 second mark. Now you notice as I move this is going to update down here and I'm almost at 20 seconds right now it's telling me that the red tick mark is at 18.332 seconds. Well if you don't want to work with those decimal numbers and you want to snap everything to either 18 seconds, 19, or 20, etc, etc, you can turn snapping on up here. So if we turn on that snapping button we can actually uh, snap this. So you see as I move this around, it's going to snap to either 18 seconds, 18 and a half seconds, 19 seconds, 19 and a half, 20 seconds, etc, etc. So I'm going to set this to about, I don't know, maybe we'll set this to like 20 seconds just to give ourselves plenty of time. If later we find that we need less than that, we can always trim that down. If we need more, we'll expand it and push it out further than 20 seconds. Now the green tick mark represents your uh, your looping, okay? So basically it's a loop sequence. So we're not really going to worry about this right now. So what I'm going to do for the moment is I'm going to take the end of the loop here and I'm going to place that over here where the red tick mark is. And the interesting thing about that is if I take this and I try to go past the red, I can't because I can't loop anything past the maximum uh, of the animation track. So I'm just going to leave it there. So if you want the, basically the green to go further out, you have to take the red tick mark, push that out, and then grab the green, push that out, etc., etc. I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, cool. So when we created this track, Unreal created an animation keyframe by default, which is this guy up here. might be a little bit hard to see. It's this little red triangle up here and you can actually click on it now, if I try to move it I actually can't just with the mouse button if you want to move that you're gonna to have to hold down the control key and then click and drag and because snapping is on this keyframe is gonna to snap to every one or 0.5 seconds so I'm gonna leave that 
at zero seconds. So that's the default keyframe. Uh, you usually want to have that, but you can delete it if you wanted to. I could actually take that, hit the delete key, and now I have no animation keyframes. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that, though I don't want to do that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and save and end this video. Now, when I save, you're going to notice Unreal won't really want to. And if I go to the viewport and try to save here, what you're going to get is an error message that says you have to close matinee before you save this level. Do you want to do this and continue? Just hit yes. What happens is you can't save the level with matinee open. It's just the way the system is set up. So you have to close matinee, save, and then open matinee back up and continue working. All right. Enough of my rambling. I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. And in the next one, we'll just go ahead and move on to the next step.